Thank you for tuning back into the Map Tech Podcast. My name is Tron Maverick, and I'm here to talk about all things tech. It's been a while since we spoke. I believe the last podcast that you heard from the Mav Tech Podcast was with Harry Ezel, the third, and we were talking about streaming services. Well, that's the big thing that's happening. You know, streaming services is one of the things that we've been using a lot since the pandemic started. It's crazy. You pay money here, you pay money there. It is an offset from the spending that you used to do going on dinner and movie dates and the combination because you always get hungry or pay for the concessions, you know, at the movie theater. So does it outweigh the cost or are you, how is this paradigm changing over time? Yes. So today talking about more of that in relation to new streaming service, Paramount Plus, it's been out for maybe a month or so. Oh man. Got a lot to talk about with that. My feelings with <laughs> signing up for yet another, another, another streaming service. We got some talk about that Disney bundle that you see the commercials for every, 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 every day. Especially if you look at the one of the basketball games broadcast on ABC or ESPN or they, wherever they can pay for promotions, which is everywhere. They're promoting their movies with the Disney bundle. Not so much series on Hulu and stuff like that. But look, that we got to talk about that. I got questions that were asked to me. I'm going to give you some answers or my opinions. You take it how you want. All right, here we go. So if you'd like to support this podcast and any other other podcasts on the Mavcast audio blog channel, family of podcasts, please do so by kicking that cash app link that's going to be in the show notes please support subscribe repost and tell everybody at the church too y'all guys going back to church come on tell your people at the church to tune in it's all good it's all good we 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 family we worship in here we fellowship in here you know it's in different ways but we got this so let's talk about paramount plus how many how many streaming services are we going to have to sign up for, right? This is not yet, but another thing that just popped up during the whole war of, well, who's going to make you pay extra (laughs) to watch a show with this platform lock in when I already pay money for a cable package or a live TV streaming package already. Before I talk about really what what I like and dislike about Paramount Plus and why I've used Paramount Plus right now, it takes us back to the time where a lot of people were complaining about having these bundle deals with the cable subscription, like Comcast, better yet known as Xfinity, you know, see it on the truck, but still Comcast. And they're like, man, I'm tired of getting stuck with these contracts. You know, I want these premium channels. I get stuck in this bundle that I can't get out of or I'm going to lose a whole everything. You know, the traditional cable bundle where they gave you probably like three months of HBO for free, but you had a two year contract. So if you didn't cancel right on time, even if you did, you might have increased your overall bill because it was in the bundle, or you can't just get out of it whenever you want to. It's like your hands are tied. So people wanted choice. They wanted the ability to have things more a la carte. All right. They heard you. Then the pandemic hit. Now, they were playing all this stuff before the pandemic, but it just went like accelerated mode when the pandemic was popping up because again people were stuck at home during the pandemic what are they going to do stream stuff right they can't go out to the movie theater when they're on lockdown got to stream at home all right perfect opportunity business wise perfect opportunity for them to just accelerate and move fast 
using the agile methodology probably to get all of these platforms and all the content, you know, aggregated all that in here for that platform lock in that we're used to Apple doing, but it was to appease the masses and say, Hey, guess what? You can cancel at any time. We'll give you a trial, probably like a week, maybe three days if we're just mean, <laughs> you know, you know, some shorter than others, but you have a choice. You're not locked in anymore, but there's a caveat. All right. You have to probably sign up for five to six to seven. I don't know. Uh, hopefully not 10 different streaming services to get the good quality streaming that you want from that content. Let me, let me explain something. So Paramount Plus is kind of like the other streaming services that came out. I, I don't know if anybody does Discovery Plus. I don't know how much I like the Food Network nowadays to where I want to pay extra for that. So is it is it like cost effective for what I watch? No. But if I was hardcore, I, I don't even know if I was hardcore in the, in the Food Network like that, if I would still do Discovery Plus. I mean, I don't know. Deadliest Catch. It's been on for a while. It's kind of getting old. You know, stuff like that. I don't know if I would play for pay for Discovery Plus, especially when Disney Plus also has like Nat Geo. Anyway, so Paramount Plus is different from that. It doesn't have the stuff like you have to have this niche, like like obsession over, right? You don't watch TLC all day, right? No, the, the content that they have is like the Transformer franchise. They have uh, their old movie studio for one. So they have the IP to a whole bunch of, of like... Uh, these sagas and and everything they hold a lot of the cbs content because it's paramount a lot of paramount stuff is cbs firecom all this it's very confusing trust me it's confusing i know i'm not going to go into the weeds with that but the thing about paramount is it's more of the stuff that you'll probably watch i'll give you an example there was this series that my wife really loves, and it's pretty good once you start watching it. It's like, wow, this is pretty good. It started on CBS. It's called Evil, and it has the same guy that played um, Luke Cage. And, yeah, you know, it's good. They, they have a really good cast. It's good chemistry, really action-packed, and it, it just keeps moving. But they got you used to watching it on CBS, but now you have to sign up for Paramount plus to watch the new season of evil. Oh, I think that was evil. That was kind of a dick move, but I can see where they're going with it. All right. So let me put it in perspective for you. So Paramount plus is five 99 with commercials, right? After the free trial, it's five ninety nine with commercials, nine ninety nine with no ads at all. So on the movies, this is a caveat. On the movies, you're not going to have commercials. It's just going to play a straight movie like all the way through. But on shows that probably would have commercials that were probably already on linear linear television. What I mean by that is the traditional, the the time spot for shows that are on the certain schedule. That's linear television. One comes after the other. It's not just a dump of content like Netflix does. So what you have is you have co commercials or no commercials. It's kind of like Hulu in a sense. Now, Paramount Plus has this show. Now, when it was on CBS, they couldn't pass a certain level of content because it's restricted it's it's like this a uh, one of the large broadcast networks so fcc is not going to let them drop an f-bomb however you watch the first episode of the new season of evil on paramount plus there is an f-bomb i was like what okay all right i get it you know what i'm not opposed to profanity i actually embrace it so was it worth it I'll say yeah, and let me tell you another reason why Paramount Plus may be worth it to you that, I mean, I don't know. This seems like I might keep this thing because there's a movie with Mark Wahlberg, and, you know, they had Lawrence Fishburne, too. It's called Infinite. Now, it's a very, very nice sci-fi movie. 
it has a twist on something that you've seen before. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. Go look at the trailer. It's worth seeing on Paramount Plus. Let me tell you why. If a movie is going to be good, but you're not sure if it's going to be good, there is a way to test it out to see if it's worth paying money for. And people like to use this method as they like to demonize it because like it's taking money out of pockets of the studios. But let me tell you what happens. So there are these streaming apps where you can get the pirated content. So we were trying to see how good this movie is. Don't know how good it is, just saying, but we have a method of testing it out on one of those apps. And then we realized, okay, the sound's not that good. The picture's nice. This is this is probably going to be a really nice movie. Judging from the trailer and how it opened up, we're like, okay, it just doesn't sound right. Like how they how they coded uh, the codex of that with that file, it didn't sound right with the balancing of the Atmos, you know, converting in the output and all that, right? So we were like, all right, cool. We're just going to at least do the free trial of Paramount Plus. And I'm telling you, that was worth it. That movie is dope. You know, I'm like, I would almost pay to see this in the movie theater. I probably would have. I have definitely paid for a movie on that quality level and probably a lot lower in the movie theater versus streaming it. I'm telling you, that's a movie worth watching. It's a sci-fi movie. Let's deal with it. it. It talks about reincarnation and how the science and, and how the... It's really dope. I'm not going to tell you anymore. Go watch it. It's worth the watch. And I'd say it's worth getting and watching at least binge watching, you know, Evil. Evil is a pretty good show. Just saying. It's, it's about a group of uh, people affiliated with the Catholic Church and trying to find these supernatural occurrences to where the devil is, you know, influencing crime and murders and all that. It's really dope. Not going to tell you any more than that. Go check that out. Really dope. Now, I got that out the way. We got to talk about the Disney bundle to stay on the topic of streaming. All right. So I have had questions about the Disney bundle. Questions were like, okay, so is it worth it? What comes in the Disney bundle? Should I buy a subset of services that are included with the Disney bundle instead of buying the bundle itself? What's more cost effective? Is it worth getting for what I want to watch? All the questions you should ask yourself, mind you, if you are also thinking about the Disney bundle. I'm going to answer most, if not all, of those questions with, it might not be factual information, but it's from my experience. So just take that and run with it. Do your research, bounce the two, and then you can make a better decision about what you want to invest your money in. All right, so let's talk about what's in the Disney bundle. First and foremost, this is the Disney bundle. What they have at the at the forefront of the promotions is Disney Plus. Disney Plus is amazing. I will tell you right up front, Disney Plus is delivering with the content all the time. If you don't like any of the movies that they put out for like it was more kid oriented, if you didn't like the Mulan movie, I gotta rewatch that to be give a fair feedback on it because I, I don't think I gave it a really good chance. If you don't like any of that stuff or or the other stuff that they have on there, the corny series that you might like, I don't know, you know how Disney is. Um, if you just like straight up for Marvel content, it delivers on all cylinders. Every single time. I mean, you might not have liked Wanda. You might not. You might not like WandaVision. But I don't know who didn't like the Falcon and Winter Soldier. What? And then Loki? If you dislike Loki, what's wrong with you? I mean, some of the stuff might go over your head a little bit, but it ain't like it's not rocket science. But dude, it's Loki. If you don't like that, I don't know. The Mandalorian. 
if you're a Star Wars fan, this is necessary to have. To have. To binge anytime you want. And all the Disney property that's out there. They have Nat Geo. They have the Disney Pixar stuff. Uh, there's something else that I'm forgetting that's on there too. But I'm just saying the content has been delivering. Raya and the Last Dragon was a pretty good movie. Luca, I, uh, I'm no, we're not going to talk about Luca. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I don't know what to say about that. Don't let your kids watch it quite yet. You might want to watch it, parents, and then decide because there's an undertone to this movie. I just got to make you aware of that. Look, I'm warning you up front because I watched the movies. We made it through the movie. We had our opinions. And I think if you, it's a nice movie. It's a really good movie. Some of the times you're like, okay, this is something that might totally like not be like, oh, you have to have a conversation with your kids later. But if your kids are smart and they are aware of their surroundings, like a lot of kids are, I don't know. You might just want to watch it first. Uh, anyway, but Disney Plus definitely hitting the all cylinders. Next is Hulu. Who is included with this bundle? Now Hulu is the service. It's kind of like how Paramount Plus is in this biz, in this like model, but it has another layer on top of it. There's a lot of complexities with this. Oh, oh, you're about to lose your mind because when you go to the website, you're like, this is so many choices. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break it down for you. All right, so with Hulu. You have um, content that was aired on like NBC, ABC, not CBS because of deals and, and especially because of Paramount Plus. <laughs> so that was usually CBS content. So you have the majority of those stuff that was aired the night before, and it's either with commercials if you have the five ninety nine. I think it's still five ninety nine. Or I can't remember the price. Maybe like nine ninety nine, just like um, Paramount Plus is, and you get ads versus no ads, um, and then you get a few original series. I think The Handmaid's Tale is on there. I don't really watch it. I don't know what it's about. I can't tell you if you should watch it for that or not. Give it a free trial. As a matter of fact, if you want to try all this stuff and you got nothing to do for like a week. Do the free trial and just try all this stuff out. But there's another complexity layer to this whole thing that has Hulu included because Hulu also does live TV streaming just like YouTube TV does. They have a package dedicated to that. And then what you get with that is all the base Hulu content plus live TV channels, DVR and premium channel access just like YouTube TV. So there's complexity you can add on the top of that bundle because there's a bundle for that. And then there's uh, ESPN Plus over here. <laughs> if you love 30 for 30, go all in. There was a Kobe Bryant, uh, RIP. There was a Kobe Bryant um, series on there. It's pretty good. But um, yeah, I don't know. All right. So here we have three things in the bundle. There's layer tiers with the pricing models depending on how you want to mix and match right but the basis of it is you can either do one of each separately or do it in the bundle and if you do it in the bundle the deal the, the choice that you have is more of you do you have it with commercials so there's a, a layer that has okay i get disney plus hulu with ads, with commercials, and ESPN Plus for this price. And then you have a tier that has all that included, but with no ads on Hulu. Then you have the one that has the all, all of the stuff, no ads on Hulu, plus live TV from Hulu live streaming. And then there's another stuff if you want premium channels and then you go on the weeds with that. You figure it out yourself. <laughs> All right. So what I have is the bundle that has all three included and no ads on Hulu. Now, is it worth it? Okay. So if you get that, it's closer to the plan. If you got the top tier, 
Netflix plan that gives you high dynamic range and all that stuff and four streaming simultaneous streams and all that. All right. So it's about there. I think it's about $17. I just want to say eyeball it right there. About 18. All right. So it's not cheap. Now, is it worth it? I don't know. So Disney by itself, if you just like Disney stuff, you could just get that by itself. I think it's like $6.99, maybe $7.99 right now. So you can save yourself a pretty good chunk of that monthly fee if you just want all of the Marvel, Star Wars, and all the Disney property stuff. You can add on Hulu if you have if you have like series that you want to watch, or if you totally cut the cable and you're okay with watching the stuff that was aired the previous day from those two major networks and then some other stuff, then that's cool. Or, I mean, hey, look, it's just what you want to mix and match. But for what we have, is it worth it? We were watching a series, an older series called Salem, and it was worth it because we were able to finish out the whole series really quickly. And also, we were binge-watching the series for Snowfall. So, all right, in the Disney deal, and this was already on there in the first place, but one of the things in the Disney deal that they like to do is they like to put the FX content, which is more R-rated stuff, and it's probably more like HBO than what you would see on, you know, regular cable channels they put that stuff on hulu and it's totally um mature adult content f-bombs f-balls violence 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 yes uh if you like movies like they have content just like netflix like people who's been around for a long time really long time maybe as long as the streaming library was on netflix i will i want to say i want to say hulu actually was the better streaming platform before netflix got really popular you remember netflix was about the dvds all right so anyway is this package worth it for about the are you pay, you're basically paying for another netflix is it worth it i think so i think so basically because of what you get from the Disney Plus subscription and the, all the stuff you get on Hulu, like they got good movies out there. They got good movie stuff that you you have, maybe you have seen before, or maybe you haven't, maybe old but new to you. It's it's a good option. They have good stuff on there. All the FX shows, a lot of good content on there. Check that out. Uh, check out Salem too. You just got to make sure you have your soul right because <laughs> they go crazy with that show. Oh, it's about the Salem witch. Oh, oh woo. Oh, I just cringe. Oh, man. I'm telling you, this is not for the weak at heart. They go in hard on the first episode and they don't stop. <laughs> they don't stop. Watch the show and, and tell me what you think about it. So you got the Disney bundle. I would say it's worth it. Uh, now, are you getting streaming fatigue at this point? So you know it's like you got to sign up for all these services. And you're like, hey, man, ain't nobody got money to pay for all this. Nobody got time to be paying for all this stuff when you got all this stuff to pay for. All right, so here's, here's a plan for you. This is what I had in my mind, but it does take some work. And I'm going to give you the legit way to do it and not the creep way to do it there is and i'm not going to do it because if i might get backlash from trying to get people to trick the system i'm not going to do that because they're going to they're going to basically going to start blocking stuff if that gets popular so what you do is you try to figure out when series are coming out when you want to watch them or when you can watch them and then where those series are playing at let me break it down for you so let's say and this is kind of what people started to do when the services were unbundled with traditional cable contracts they got really smart doing that and it started with hbo so what you do is you you figure out when your favorite series is coming on do some work because you got to figure that out anyway then you go in and say hey um 
where is this playing at? RK. All right. All right. So what you can do is you can uh, suspend your service and activate your services on and off, depending on when your series is aired or not. So if you're watching the Loki series now, which is probably going to run for maybe a month, month and a half, you would get two payments out of that. They'll get two payments from you. And then if you don't want to watch anything else on Disney until whatever comes out later that you like, and they're they're smart because they keep the hits coming, um, then you can suspend the service and wait till that comes. And then you can offset that with another series that you find on another platform. So you don't have to have these, these recurring charges every last month for every last streaming service. The reason why we wanted the a la carte type subscriptions is for this purpose to figure out on your, and it's, the onus is on you. If you just let this, if you just let the subscriptions renew itself, that's not their problem. They're not getting over on you. They gave you the choice to be able to say, hey, well, I'm not going to watch this. This I'm not going to use Disney Plus all year. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to watch it for this series. And then you pay for that month. It's worth it. Just like even if I let the Paramount Plus thing go for after the trial and get charged the $5.99 or $9.99. And I really liked Infinite, which is a really dope movie in my opinion, and watch the whole season or the whole series, if you haven't started yet, of Evil, then it already paid for itself. Then you stop it and then figure out when some something else comes back and then do it all over again. Some people are really tricking the system. This is what I didn't want to really mention, but some people keep doing the free trials and using new emails all the time. Now, I don't know if you want to keep doing that because you just all you're doing is flooding, flooding everybody's database with more accounts, which is eventually going to trickle down and be bad for the environment which means i mean because they're going to need more data centers to house all these these transactions that are coming through the internet just keep that in mind don't be a part of the problem but i mean that is the thing i mean if you want to do it once or twice hey i just made you aware of it i didn't recommend you do that but you got to be strategic about what you want to stream when you want to stream it where it's streamed on and then you can make the best budgetary decision for you and your family. I know some people don't, don't care at all about any Marvel stuff, Disney stuff at all. They hate Disney for whatever moral reason or whatever. They're like, I don't like Disney. Shh, don't pay for it. Just do the Hulu stuff. And if you, I mean, I mean Disney has the majority stake in Hulu, so you might not want, want to watch that either. But you might want to watch the ESPN stuff for the documentaries, the 30 for 30 specials. I don't know. I don't know. You have a choice. You can do the bundle or separately. I wouldn't do each one separately. That's kind of like defeating the purpose. You might as well do the bundle. And then what's great about it is you don't always have to stick with that tier. If you change your mind, you're like, well, I started out with this bundle and I just want to reduce down to one of the two. Do it. It'll keep your same accounts active. You're not deleting your accounts. You're just not doing that subscription. So they keep your account active. They just don't keep your service active. So you can, you can go back and forth if you want. Just do it at the right times of the billing cycle so it, it's not prorating you in a negative way for you. And they're getting more money. You got to figure out when the billing cycle ends and stuff so you actually get charged appropriately. So stuff to keep in mind. You smart people. You can figure it out. Here's, I, I, just, I just dropped some knowledge on you. All right. So let's keep going. Now, there I want to mention a movie that was on Netflix. I didn't really think I was going to. I didn't even know about this movie in the first place. All right. So it's called Ice Road. It has Liam Neeson and, and surprisingly Lawrence Fishburne. So whenever you see Liam Neeson, you're like, okay, so he's going to try to save his family. Like, why do keep messing with his family? Or he's going to be, like, in this really awkward situation. I think that he has a movie out, like, when he's a cowboy. And you know his accent. You, he does not do a cowboy accent. 
not a, not a Texan accent. It was really awkward. Didn't even give the movie a chance because I remember that time that Arnold Schwarzenegger played a uh, I think he was a a sheriff in Texas, and that didn't go over well either. I mean, the action was pretty good, but like, come on, man, that's awkward. Why would you be? Come on, I look. I know all the thing about diversity and stuff, but look, you can't be put. <laughs> You can't be putting British people and sound like I, I can see if they got good accents, but they don't look make sure that the, at least the actor can have a good accent. Anyway, this was not a typical uh, movie I would see from Liam Neeson. It's it slightly different. It's still action. He still kind of saves the day, but it's not the typical save the day type thing that he's known for. I think he's I think he's like broadening his save the day type methods in movies it's not about just rescuing his family because i'm pretty sure he was like well i just need to leave these people alone because they must be antagonizing all these like kidnappings and stuff like really why did they have to make that much taken movies <laughs> i'm just saying anyway so it's a good movie it has lawrence fishburne in it i'm not gonna give any spoilers it's called ice road it's literally called ice road Infer what you may from that. <laughs> and then, hey, it's a pretty good action movie. I loved it. It was kind of scary in a in a in a real world type way. I don't know if I would drive over a road made of ice in a semi and a convoy of semis. No, don't think that's a good idea. I didn't give any spoilers. It's on the trailer. Go watch the trailer. You should watch it. It's pretty good. Did you see what I'm talking about? But it's, it had a nice twist to it. It wasn't cliche per se. So I liked it. I think you should watch it on Netflix. Netflix always delivers. I tell you, I tell you, there's always a debate of if you want to pay for another streaming service over Netflix. And I even had to tell my dad this. I'm like, well, at the end of the day, nobody really leaves Netflix. And if they do, they always come back because there's always something on Netflix. Just let the subscription ride every month. I mean, that's just like those ones because you always find a gym. You always find a gym or a guilty pleasure. You never know. It's one of those things. So let's wrap up real quick. We got some quick hits coming in right here before we go into the 11 o'clock block, man. So let's talk about YouTube TV subscribers. So YouTube TV gave a subset of their subscribers. I don't know if it's everybody, but it was an offer that was sent to your email. So you always got to check your email. I know a lot of people are not in the habit of checking their email. You got check your email, people, because look, you become a, it gives you some freebies sometimes. I did post it. If you didn't see it, it's because of the algorithm. It's not because of me. I, I tried to let you know. But they gave you a free TiVo streaming stick not a stick it's like a dongle but it's not like a stick like the fire tv stick it's kind of like a square but it it's more like a chromecast ultra or chromecast the newer chromecast looking things yeah it's more like that this is not form factor but it's android tv it's not google tv what what i mean by that is the new chromecast have they have a different interface than what the Android TV interface is on some of the Android TV devices. They're gonna they're gonna streamline that and make everything look the same soon, but it just is different. You get the same apps, the same content, but it's a different navigation process. You just gotta get used to. So your muscle memory is not gonna work if you are a heavy um, Google TV user, but it's not something that you're gonna have a learning curve. You just gotta. Download the apps, just use it in a different way. But yeah, it was free. I'm like, whoa. So how is it? I mean, it's good. The remote's pretty good. It controls your TV um, power and audio devices. It logs you in just as easy as it does with any other Google product. It has Chromecast built in, so you can stream or cast from your phone the content that you want. So it's pretty legit. And it was free. The normal cost of it, I think, is like thirty or forty dollars. Would I pay money for this over a Chromecast with Google TV? No. But hey, 
They give it to us free. Just for us being loyal. I always like when your service provider of whatever kind of service provider it is gives you freebies. Um, Comcast Xfinity would not give you any free TV streaming dongle proactively. I mean, if you complain, they might give you something free. But they're not just going to say, hey, buddy, here you go. Now, there's a business reason behind this because of the whole thing with the Roku and and, and Google debates, and put, putting the YouTube TV app back on the app store for the Roku channel. So this is a way to get free devices to those people that would... Okay, so they did the data. I'll just tell you the, the meat of this because they, they, they did data and they see who has Google TV or YouTube TV active on whatever a Roku device because they hold that in the database. They can tell what active users use that on this device or service, right? And then they were like, well, okay, so there's at least one device that we see that you're associated with if you're a Roku user and you probably need to redownload or something, update the YouTube TV app, right? So they were like, okay, well, we're in a battle with Roku right now, and we need to just get these devices out to them. So they had a deal with TiVo, and then they sent people these devices. Not because you're a really loyal customer. It's because they don't want you to switch to another live TV streaming service since you have all these Rokus, I mean, because you come out of pocket with buying these streaming devices and if you don't want business moves to impact your customers, if your business deal says, well, you can only, you can't play this on this uh, device because of whatever argument we're having, and, you know, it's not fair to you because those are your devices. It's not like the cable companies gave those Rokus to you. You paid money for it. Under the under the perception, <laughs> mind you, I'll say perception, that you had choice of any of the streaming TV services. So, I mean, it was a, it was a solid thing that they did for the customers. I appreciate that. It was pretty good. Another thing that came out is Google TV now has Google Stadia. It's been a while since they were supposed to get this out. So they decommissioned the whole Chromecast Ultra device. I still have one. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't use it that much. But they had this bundled in the Founders Edition pack where you get for Google Stadia once you sign up, do like a founder or whatever, and it comes with a control. Cool. All right. They said, well, we're going to phase this Chromecast Ultra out. We need to get Stadia which is their cloud gaming platform, if you haven't heard of Google Stadia. It's kind of like xCloud, Xbox Cloud service, um, and the PlayStation Network cloud gaming. So it's kind of like that. Actually, it's the same. Uh, just different games, maybe, because of licensing and contracts. But they put it on here, and they were like, well, we promised that we're going to put it on the new Chromecast with Google TV. And they did. It's on there. They also gave you a chance to get a discounted priced controller. Normally like $70, which that's expensive for a controller, but it's one of the Stadia branded controllers. I think they discounted to like $40 or $50. So if you have a new Chromecast with Google TV device, and you know who you are if you have it, and you want to uh, take part in that streaming service on that device, go ahead and get that uh, discount. Check your email. Check your email. Go ahead and see if you can get that discount on the Google Store for that um, that gaming controller. The last thing I want to talk about is upgrading your soundbar. I always recommend over a certain period of time that you may need to upgrade your peripherals to your platform streaming services or whatever, just like you upgrade your TV, you must upgrade along with it at a certain point, your audio. 
had a few um, plateau moments of myself, and you have to kind of know when it's appropriate to change out maybe your sound bar. So let's say you get one of these nice 4K HDR streaming TVs, you know, really nice big one. And then you have an older home theater setup. Now, not to say that it won't work, but I'll put this in targeted, targeted, targeted situations. You have a older soundbar that you have for a while. It's pretty good. It's pretty, pretty good. You got used to the sound. And then when you get this nice new TV, you're like, okay, it sounds good still, but there's room for improvement. Now, what do you do? You go update your sound bar. Now, you got to do it smart because, again, just like with the whole finding what you want in terms of a streaming service, you have to find out what type of audio that you are willing to invest in. You might be a person that doesn't really care and they just want to hear more of the, you know, the conversation, the dialogue, to separate and not and not just use the TV speakers because TV speakers are terrible. They're terrible. When they make these TVs thinner and lighter, they compromise on the on the on the, the speakers. I'm telling you people, get a sound bar if you get a TV. Especially if you're getting older. And it's it, because of those very terrible speakers, it's hard to separate dialogue from background sounds. That's just a physical thing that happens to people at certain stages in their life. That, and it might be because of an accent, might be just natural deterioration of your ear, your hearing. You never know. But it's important to find out what is important to you. And what the output, maybe you don't want like this really dope setup and you just want to hear the separation of the sound, make it sound a little better. Or you just have this thing where you're like, man, I had this sound bar for a good eight, nine years. Well, I tell you that they make improvements to something that you might pay less for now than you did then. And that's probably why you ha had the sound bar that long. Once you upgrade to a new one, you immediately say, wow, they tune these things a lot better than they used to. I'm telling you. I would recommend Vizio if you are wanting to get into the whole sound bar setup with the surround speakers. Or you can go in and do whatever sound bar or receiver type setup that you have for your home theater. Whatever you do, at some point, you might even need to upgrade, update that receiver. You might just need to get a new one because the codex that it accepts from all this new video format needs an updated hardware to convert all these codecs into a better sound through these speakers. So it's not just for sound bars. Check your receiver that has all your speakers hooked up and maybe you might need to upgrade from that and you don't have to spend a lot of money. It might be like a newer version that costs less than you paid for the previous version and it just sounds better because they updated how things are converted with the sound because all this is compressed audio at the end of the day unless you're playing physical media, but we're streaming a lot. so. If this able to convert those sounds appropriately, you're automatically going to get a better experience from those new speakers, the new soundbar, or the new receiver. And you would if you just kept going along with that older one. So don't be afraid to upgrade. Just be very careful that you get the return on investment that you want. I guarantee, I guarantee, unless you just get a like a don't get a really cheap receiver or a really, really cheap uh, soundbar. I would do recommend Vizio for the soundbar. I definitely do. I would say Sony Pioneer is is the go-to. Maybe Yamaha. They might be a little expensive, to, you know, depending on the model, but those are good receiver brands. 
They last a long time. Again, they're usually forward thinking on the technology so you can future proof yourself to an extent. But don't be afraid to update. You get new TVs. I, I think every time you get it, like a new TV that is able to play like this, this vastly different range of codecs for the new technology that where they have, I think it's really um, feasible to also invest in the soundbar that's going to give you the sound to match the visual. Don't have this dope picture on the TV and you have these like really, really terrible speakers. <laughs> It doesn't match up. All right. So thank you for listening to the MavTech podcast. If you'd like to support this podcast again, please click on that Cash App link that's going to be in the description of the post-recorded show. I thank you for tuning in. And y'all have a great day. I don't want to say. Hey guys, how are you liking the show? How are you liking the podcast? How are you liking the content in general I'm sending you away? I hope you do. And if you do, and you want to keep making the show better and better and better, which I'm really trying to do, and get it out to more people with the best sound quality possible, and get some possibly celebrities on here, and people from the tech industry on here as interviews and panel guests. Oh, that would be great. Please support the show via the cash app link i'm going to put on the description show notes yeah so you can also get producer credits by doing so i'm not asking for a specific amount anything that you can give to say thanks and i thank you for being loyal and listening to every everything you can on the podcast channel i hope you come back and share with your friends more be blessed and have a great day